Australians will vote in a referendum this Saturday to decide whether the country's constitution should recognise First Nations people by giving them a so-called voice to parliament. The vote threatens to split the nation with yes and no campaigners deeply divided. In this first of two special reports, Roger Maynard travels to Walgett in far west New South Wales where the issue is not as straightforward as it seems. Walgett is a country town some 650 kilometres from Sydney. Around half the population are of indigenous descent, but if you thought that many Aborigines here would support the voice in the referendum, you'd be wrong. My honest opinion is it won't benefit the Aboriginal people, and if it doesn't benefit the Aboriginal people, it's going to set us back 20 years. Gary Trindle has lived here for 43 of his 67 years. He's a hard-working and respected member of the community, but like so many First Nations people, he distrusts the big city movers and shakers who think they know best when it comes to Aboriginal needs. And as far as I'm concerned, we've had Aboriginal people representing us for years and they've, done, they've, they've achieved nothing. The only way that it's going to work, the only way it's going to achieve is if it is local people that are representing the local people. It's proposed that a committee of 24 Aborigines from around Australia will make up the advisory body's voice to Parliament. But who will appoint them, how much it'll all cost, and how much power they might wield further down the track is unclear. Be courageous and strong and fight for the... And it's that lack of detail that has driven the success of the No campaign, whose supporters fear the referendum could end up dividing Australia by race. Not so, says the government, while also pointing out that The Voice will merely make recommendations to Parliament and not have any power of its own. Even so, no supporters are not convinced. I smell a rat. And when I smell a rat, I'm not voting. I will vote no. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain the no vote will get, will get up, but I don't think that's the end of the conversation. I really think there needs to be more done to help out the people in the remote areas that really need the help. My people have come over a thousand kilometres today to show you that we don't agree with this current agenda or referendum. That should be enough for you to make a decision. Back in Wargat, they continue to worry about Aboriginal disadvantage, about education, child mortality, domestic violence and life expectancy. It's no coincidence that most of the men Gary Trindle grew up with are now dead. Bad health, often caused by alcohol and poor diet, have only added to their woes. Like their fellow countrymen in Australia's more remote areas, they face a life of inequality. This young Wargat man is only 19 and knows what it's like. Treated unfairly here, is there a certain degree? It's everywhere, it's everywhere. It's not just in one town, the Aboriginal people. We treat it unfair everywhere, everywhere we go. We look at differently to other people, that's how I feel anyway. For some, it's a challenging environment that offers little hope. And like many other people across Australia who also face rising living costs, they find the referendum far from their thoughts and difficult to get their head around. Do you know which way you'll be voting? I don't know. Why not? You haven't made up your mind? No. Do you think it might be a good thing for Aboriginal people? Well, I don't know. That's another thing. Whatever the result of this referendum, the harsh reality is that many Australians don't fully understand the so-called voice to Parliament, or perhaps don't care. The real concern is that life for many of Australia's First Nations people will remain much the same, regardless of the outcome. Roger Maynard, CNA, Wargett, in far west New South Wales.